Hey Ross World, my money makes money. I would like to share with you a conversation I had with a viewer. He's not yet a subscriber. He is a subscriber of Dave Ramsey and I did mention this in another video and I don't know the order if I'm going to publish this one first or the next one. And it means nothing to you. But nevertheless, it was a great conversation. I did ask for his permission. He said yes, that I could. And I would like to go over the information we actually talked about. Now, you're going to receive a lot of good information from this conversation. And excuse me, as I look over to my computer, I want to read it word for word. Now, this is his responses to my video, Debt Can Be Good. Now, his name is, and I'm going to butcher it, I believe it's called Very Appleseeny. Very Appleseeny, okay? So, in this video, instead of calling him Very Appleseeny, which is probably the wrong pronunciation, I'm just going to call him V. Here it is. So, he looked at my video, and his, this is his response. Very bad advice. You are so wrong here. Do you personally know these millionaires that borrow money? Borrow money is the fastest way for a millionaire to become poor. It is common misunderstanding that the millionaires borrow their way to the paradise. Personally, I know some millionaires next door and none of them, even my father being one, didn't borrow money to become a millionaire. They worked their asses off and saved like crazy and invested all their surplus. Bear in mind, if you invest your own money and the investment goes bad for whatever reason, could be that it's not your fault. You lose money, you invest it, but if an investment goes bad and you have borrowed it, it will consume your life savings, also make you actually poorer. And the part that many do not think here if you own 100% of your investment and it goes good, you can keep 100% of the profits. And if you borrow it and it goes good, you can keep only 100% plus 100% interest rate <laughs> and, then 200, and then a negative 200% of the profits. What I'm basically saying, by borrowing, your reward risk ratio is worse than investing in your own money even though the interest rates are lower. Okay, so that was his first stint. Hopefully I read that um, in a manner you can understand. Here's my response. Good point. But I disagree based on the information I gave in the video. Yes, I do know a couple of millionaires that I spoke with actually borrowed a substantial amount of money to be where they are now. So I respect your response, but there are many roads to being rich. It just depends on the road's end. Your father could have lost it all. Fortunately, he didn't, and, it's, and he seems to be doing well. Thanks for your well in depth response. His response. Your risk-reward ratio is worse when you borrow because of interest payments. In economics, this is called unfair gamble. I actually heard of that. Where you keep only the part of the profits, but pay the whole capital plus interest if you fail. Good point. My response. True. But what unfair gamble doesn't explain is a low interest loan you obtain either from an investor or a bank whose loan, who loans the capital you need to jumpstart a business, sustain or increase production, takes a risk as well. Also depending on the deal slash loan slash contract is brokered, you may only pay what you lost or with very little interest. I understand your position, but a lot of small businesses today, as well as millionaires, have taken out business loans. I know that you know this. I am not negating that your information is inaccurate, but in some cases, not feasible. Some people could work their butt off and invest and save and never have enough to start their own business because in the end, no one wants to borrow money or give an investor a piece of something that they thought of and worked hard for just for money to start. And then I reply, and then I say, good stuff. His reply, my standing towards debt is very conservative. And in the same time, I am very skeptical about banking. In the end, it is the bankers that make the most money in our system. In new economy, you do not need to borrow money to start producing. Many companies do a crowds deal or crowdfunding. And if they hit their goals on pending orders, they get their production going. In many ways, this is a far better way to, to jumpstart a business. And the best thing is that you do not need to go to the bank begging for money. If the goals are not met, the buyers get refunded 
and the production will not start, which is a good thing since it will not be successful anyway, so lower the risk. Also, if you want to be crazy and start a business without customers, in the traditional way, you can always find a business partner who has money as an equity partner. If your business is solid, you will always find money and you do not need to borrow it. Bear in mind, the majority of successful companies have been started with $5,000 USD or less. And I've actually said that in one of my videos, $5,000 is a good amount of money to start a business. Very, very, very few and lucky ones succeed with borrowed money. It creates a lot of extra stress to the entrepreneur, aside of the stress from the regular day-to-day -day action. I highly recommend for you to look for all other alternatives to borrowing. If your product is interesting, it is your customers that will fund your business and not the bank. Just offer them a pre-sale for a discounted price and condition that there will be enough demand that is worth to launch. My response, you make a good point, but solely depending on crowdfunding and proof of concept is not always the perfect projection of success. I do understand it has little to no risk, no risk, no reward. In many cases, even though Kickstarter and Indiegogo have done tremendous helping entrepreneurs achieve their goals, there are many roads to greatness. It really all depends. Nevertheless, a great topic and discussion. Thank you for your very intuitive, intelligent responses, greatly needed and well-deserved. His response, it really is quite hard to imagine a situation when you need to borrow money. Equity partners, of course, are entirely different topic. They're entirely different topic. And usually they bring, in addition to money, also the know-how. If the customers are not willing to buy the product before the launch, chances are you need to figure out some other product as they probably will not buy it after launch either. A prudent way to grow your existing business is simply reinvest your profits to the growth of the next year. I wish I helped to slow down you with borrowing money as borrow, I wish I helped to slow you down with borrowing money as borrowed money, easy money, and easily leads to bad decisions. So basically saying borrowed money is bad. There is also a risk in investing your own money, but that is a risk that is in most cases manageable. Really, really, really good point. Now, before I read my response, I just want to point out, I felt like he was directing it at me and not just giving a, a base. Now, Everybody knows I'm against debt altogether, but I do also talk about managed debt when it comes to cars and then debt when it comes to houses. I'm off of it. My response. Good point once again. Now in regards to slow me down in borrowing, you have to refer to my other videos, my friend, when I speak about that debt is bad. In reference to this topic, not all debt is bad. I give tribute to Dave Ramsey about his views. I respect all but not totally agree. We all have our own opinion and we as people go to different platforms that is exactly what they are getting, our opinion. This is what I'm referring to. Debt is always a last result in situations, but even debt is manageable. Most people have car and house debt. Unfortunately, a lot of Americans have credit card debt. I don't agree with debt but debt can be used as a tool to achieve wealth. I understand you disagree and present a good argument, but nevertheless, the manner in which I'm speaking has yielded millionaires. Well, a few of the ones I spoke to. This dialogue, of course, I would love to share with my viewers. I believe you have volumes of information that would be helpful to those who don't want to occur debt. I will read word for word what we have spoke about. Do I have your permission to share our conversation? His reply. Of course, you can share the discussion. I might subscribe to your channel, although I'm pretty much against borrowing money since borrowing money leads often to lose money management and it is an easy way to bankruptcy. Borrowing money for a car is probably the stupidest thing to do in my opinion since the value of a car just appreciate and those cars that will no more depreciate can be bought with cash easily. and. And yes, he's totally correct. I even talked about once that car rolls off the car dealership, it loses five to 10% of his value. So depreciation and percentage of the value of the car. My response, thank you and you're right. Please do subscribe. Once again, this is literally the only video 
I had in regards to debt in such a manner. And so Vera Appelsini, hopefully I said her right, I would like to reiterate that this is and that was the only video I ever done about debt can be good. And once again, I do respect your views. You have some really good points. You have some really good information. And hopefully, and hopefully my viewers learned something from you as well as me. And they now have options of different roads and paths they can take. So this was a video about a long discussion I had with a viewer that contained volumes of pertinent and detailed information to help you in your walk to erasing debt in your life. This is Ross World, where debt is absolutely bad. But sometimes, in my opinion, you may take out a loan to buy a house because after a few years, that house has equity and that equity crushes your debt. I'm out.